Well, you heard it from David. This is what Saskatchewan sounds like right now. We're digging out of a pretty big snowstorm, and as such, it is a snow day for a lot of us. School is cancelled in a few communities, businesses are closed, and officials in many of our cities have said, stay home, while crews clear streets and parking lots. It is rare for us to shut down in Saskatchewan. So, today, we're dedicating Blue Sky to your storm stories. Did you help a neighbour, or did a neighbour help you? What does it look like in your part of the province? You can call us right now with your storm story 1-800-716-2221 or email blue sky at cbc.ca well we have the perfect guest with us for the hour here with us today is our cbc weather specialist ethan williams hello ethan hello leisha i hope you're not too tired from uh, digging out so far i've got a sore back let me tell you <laughs> that was a workout yesterday a couple of hours spent shoveling yeah. it was wild yeah So before we get into what happened these last few hours, these last couple of days, do you want to start with any weather news that people need to know right now? Yeah, well, I think the the most maybe relieving news for people is that all those weather warnings that we had that were associated with this system that moved through uh, have come to an end now in southern and central Saskatchewan, at least. Uh, The snowfall warnings, blizzard warnings, uh, blowing snow advisories, weather statements, you name it, uh, now done. And that includes both uh, Regina and Saskatoon. Uh, The the storm is now moving a little bit further northward. It's moved to primarily Primarily into Manitoba, uh, but there is a band of snow that's still moving through uh, much of the Churchill region of the province. So Buffalo Narrows, Isle of Cross, over to La Ronge, Pelican Narrows. Uh, We're seeing uh, upwards of 10 centimeters in that part of the province today. Uh, And I'll include also the uh, the Laloche area in that too. And that whole region that I've just mentioned uh, is under a snowfall warning as a result. Uh, That's expected to probably come to an end a bit later tonight. But uh, just a heads up for you folks there that there's still some inclement weather expected in that part of the province. And of course, uh, can't uh, mention a snowstorm without the highway hotline because there are still numerous roads uh, in the province that are not recommended for travel. We actually do still have one road that is closed, and that is Highway uh, 376 east of the Battlefords. That road is closed. Uh, Also, uh, uh, just a few of the roads uh, that are not recommended for travel. Most of these are in southeastern and east central Saskatchewan, and that includes Highway 33 from Sedley down to Stoughton. Uh, Several highways in around uh, the Yorkton area, uh, including uh, that would be Highway uh, 52 west of Yorkton, not recommended for travel. And as well, uh, Highway 38 uh, from around the Foam Lake area uh, to uh, near Porcupine Plain and and kind of in those areas, Leisha, is where we're still uh, seeing those treacherous driving conditions because of, you know, loose uh, drifting snow and uh, ice on the roads and some visibility challenges, too. Yeah, and as we always say, check the highway hotline. They've got that map. You can actually see where the snow plows are, too, and mm-hmm. that's always good to know before you hit the road. A lot of uh, attention put on Lloydminster, right? It, <laughs> hearing in the newscast yeah. there of so many Saskatoon people who were stuck there, uh, families stuck there on Sunday night. So if you're listening from Lloydminster, we'd like to hear from you today, 1-800-716-2221. You can email bluesky at cbc.ca. We are hoping for your storm stories, good and bad, right? This is when we see people come together. I was laughing, Ethan, because my kids were out playing in the snow on the weekend, and a couple of people were out walking their dog, and the gentleman had a large snow shovel kind of just over his shoulder walking down the street, and it was like he was just looking for a house that needed to be shoveled. So (laughs) if people want to share with us some of those stories of neighborly goodness we'd like to hear that today too now what what is coming our way ethan i've heard about uh, some some very cold weather that mm-hmm. we will be expecting in in a bit yeah yeah of course uh, winter in saskatchewan if it's not the snow that we're dealing with it is the cold uh, and that is exactly what is coming our way uh temperatures this afternoon really not warming up all that much we're kind of at our daytime highs right now uh, for a lot of us we're sitting in between minus 15 and minus 20 uh of course uh, winds still going to be a bit gusty at times today we're seeing the those in the 40 to 50 range through a lot of the province, primarily from the west and northwest. And uh, that means that that minus 20, I'm going to feel more like minus 30 in some places. It feels like minus 33 at the moment in Regina, 
like minus 34 in Saskatoon and feels like minus 38 in Lloydminster, where uh, we are hoping to hear from uh, people today who are <laughs> stranded in that in that snow there. Uh, it's going to get to colder, I'm afraid. We have an area of high pressure that moves in uh, tonight, and that'll continue to clear the skies. It's nice. We're seeing the sun come out in a lot of places right now. Uh, but that means that the cloud has gone away, and that kind of blanket of, uh, of cloud cover protecting us from the cold weather is also gone. And so for a lot of south and central, we're going to be seeing those temperatures uh, dropping to around minus 30 tonight. A little bit of wind is going to make that feel closer to minus 40. And there is the possibility that we could see uh, extreme cold warnings extend into Saskatchewan. We have them uh, in place right now through much of central Alberta. And uh, so Environment Canada likely going to be making the call on extending those if they're going to do that or not. Probably a little bit later this afternoon, Leisha. Okay, so that's what's coming. But what what happened these last 48 hours in Saskatchewan? Do you want to start with Saskatoon? I can describe for you what it looks like here, but why don't you tell us how much snow we got here? Yeah, well, as you heard uh, Pertush and David mention in the news, uh, we're looking uh, pretty much anywhere between 30 and 40 centimeters of snow uh, in town is is what ended up happening uh, over kind of a couple of days uh, just this past weekend. The snow has come to an end now, of course, as we know, but uh, what's really uh, causing problems is the wind pushing that snow into big, huge drifts. And so we're getting, uh, you know, these snow drifts up on people's lawns and and decks and and on city streets that are several feet high in some places. So uh, that's causing motorists to kind of get stranded. And and this was all the result of a a pretty significant low pressure system uh, that moved up from Montana, kind of pulled a lot of moisture into it as it moved northward then of course it hit that colder arctic air and that uh, moisture changed over to snow and it dumped it all onto us and and into the saskatoon area not uncommon leisha to see these types of storms forming especially this time of year because we're in that period of time now where we're between kind of the the depths of winter december january february kind of the meteorological winter months and the warmer air that comes later in april into may and june and so you get that warm air and that cold air those air masses sort of fighting with each other and they create these uh, areas of low pressure which can really uh, pack a punch uh, on uh, on saskatchewan so uh, not only the saskatoon area impacted but uh, kind of right along the yellowhead corridor from saskatoon all the way to Lloyd Minster and even back into Alberta was where we saw those really high snowfall totals. Yeah, never underestimate March. No. And it, let it, me <laughs> tell you, it's taken work to dig out here in Saskatoon. I want to introduce you to Benjamin Semyonov. He's the owner of Benny's Yard Work in Saskatoon, working nonstop hmm. since the snow started falling this weekend. So he spoke to CBC's Teresa Kleem on Saskatoon morning early today. So what are you and your employees seeing out there this morning? Um, a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's, uh, there's quite a bit of snow out here for sure. Uh, how bad is it? I wouldn't call this an emergency situation by any stretch, but it is one of those days where if you can stay home, stay home for sure. How do you prioritize which areas or properties to clear first during a heavy snowfall event? Well, we do have uh, kind of a list that we do follow for um, our skid steer service and our, our sidewalk service and whatnot. So we, we kind of follow that list as we, as we go, and we just kind of get through the list as, as we can. And so we'll be out for probably the next three days clearing. Any particular bad areas in the city to avoid right now? If you're trying to drive anywhere, residential streets are a nightmare. Um, I have been kind of stuck in parking lots for the last 12 hours, so I haven't really been driving around too terribly much. But I, as far as I'm aware, talking with a bunch of colleagues, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of rough all over the city. Yeah, I can definitely saw that in my neighborhood road this morning. Can you describe a little bit the, the last 48 hours for you and your team? Was there any time for a break? Um, I've been working solid since about 6.30 yesterday. Um, I'm still out right or PM? now. AM. Oh wow! Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so I'm on hour 27, 28, whatever it's at. I now I don't even know. And uh, my my boys are uh, they're out clearing right now. Uh, they're working as quickly as they can, but I mean they've got a rest too, so we're doing 10, 12 hour days for them. And uh, as far as the we got to get people out of their parking stalls and to work sort of stuff. So skid steers got to go. How does this compare with uh, snow winds we had in the past? 
Uh, last year was pretty rough, but the the what we've been talking about all night was 2007 was the last one that we could remember that was this bad. So uh, this this is kind of comparing to that, I think. CBC spoke with you back when it was a couple of months into winter and we still had barely to no snow. Are you glad we finally got some snow? Uh, I'm, I'm definitely glad that there's some snow on the ground so we can get some work in. The boys can get some hours and whatnot. So um, I'm, I'm happy that we're out. Uh, maybe a little less would have been nice, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to get home at some point. But I don't think that's going to be happening this week. Any suggestions for people who need to leave the house today? Uh, don't leave the house if you can help it, for sure. Um, unless it's a, an emergency situation or you're an essential worker, I honestly would just stay home for the time being. Let the city get the stuff uh, cleared out of the roadways and let the uh, contractors get uh, all the parking lots and stuff cleared. Next couple days here, you should be seeing uh, things kind of going back to normal, but we will be out uh, hauling the snow out to the snow dumps for the next foreseeable future. Benjamin Semyonov is the owner of Benny's Yard Work. He was speaking there to Teresa Kleem on Saskatoon Morning. What are you you seeing out there on the roads? Maybe you're stuck at home. Like Benjamin said, don't leave the house if you don't have to. Give us a call and tell us how it looks where you are. Your storm stories is what we're talking about today here on Blue Sky. So 1-800-716-2221. You can also email us, bluesky at cbc.ca. Ethan, did you hear that? He was on hour 27. Oh my gosh. And I think it was that was at 7. 7.15 in the morning that he said that. <laughs> yeah, and, and what do you say, a, a good, uh, you know, few days here of getting that Three more all, days. Yeah, yeah. A, a just unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, y- you take for granted the, the people who are able to get, get people out of sticky situations like this, but it's a huge job. Yeah, and I saw it because on my walk, the sidewalks were for, were clear for the most part. I had a really great walk to work. But what I saw were, were all the parking lots and just how full of snow they were mm-hmm. and there were cars that had been parked on the weekend you know work vehicles that clearly could not move so i could i could see firsthand just how important the work that benjamin does is yep. you know you just gotta you need someone to help get you out so keep up the good work benny's yard work yep. now we've got someone on the line who wants to share what it's like in swift current so claire hello to you good afternoon uh Oh, what it's like in Swift Current right now. Well, there's not a cloud in the sky, but uh, you need to bundle up. It is uh, very windy and therefore very cold. I see a flag to my left, and it is flailing uh, in a way that uh, I can see the flag very clearly. So if you want to go out in Swift Current, yeah, make sure you're bundled up. Uh, The highway uh, around here is not that bad. There's maybe some snowy patches, but the highway going west from Regina, uh, I had to be uh, careful, especially in and between uh, Mortlach and uh, Chaplin, uh, uh, where that uh, uh, truck uh, jackknifed on the weekend. There's still some sections where uh, it's a little bit slippery, so I uh, would advise anybody traveling in that area of the number one to uh, take it easy there, slow it down, even if it's just about uh, 85, 90 kilometers uh, until you get past that area. Otherwise, uh, I've already seen, uh, I still see some cars and some trucks in the ditches from this weekend, so uh, don't take anything for granted. Okay, some good advice there. What about the snow? Have you found yourself shoveling quite a bit in Swift Current? No, I am uh, just traveling through back to Calgary. (laughs) But I imagine when I get back uh, to the area south of Calgary where I live, I'll have quite a bit of shoveling (laughs) to do. do. Yeah, and maybe a neighbor has done it, Claire. Wouldn't that be nice, right? Neighbors were out helping each other this weekend, I think. That would be really, really nice. I would appreciate it. But, uh, you know, I'll uh, have to see what happens when I get back. (laughs) Well, Claire, thanks for taking a moment to call us. I appreciate the update from that part of the province. So thank you. Safe travels. No no problem. Thank you. Bye.
Bye. That's Claire joining us uh, in Swift Current. If you want to call us and share with us what it's like where you are, whether it's driving conditions, if you are able to drive, or if it's just an estimate on how much snow you got, what it looks like out your window, or maybe the fun you're having on this snow day. I cannot recall school ever being canceled when I was in elementary school. Perhaps I've just forgotten, but Ethan, it, it feels rare and unusual to cancel school in Saskatchewan. So when I got that alert last night about Saskatoon, Tune public, but oh, that's the, the, this storm was a big deal. Would you agree? It's it's rare that we shut things down entirely. It, in Saskatchewan. It's so true. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that exact question because I was just thinking back. I mean, we had some you know real doozies, some big storms when I was in in school, and I don't think uh, you know we ever once had to shut down uh, the the classes for that. So I'm I'm kind of jealous of the the kids that uh, you know you get you get the day free. <laughs> yeah, they're enjoying it. Well, call us if you have memories of school being shut down or a storm of this uh, size. We'd like to hear your storm stories whether it's from this weekend or from the past. 1-800-716-2221. You can also email us bluesky at cbc.ca. Now we've got Carol on the line who's on Highway 11. Hi Carol. Hi, good afternoon. What a day in Saskatchewan. Whew. Yeah, no kidding. Where about, uh, whereabouts are you? Well, I left Regina this morning, uh, usual, you know, couple-hour drive, but uh, I was stranded because I was going to, I was at the Briar, and uh, just on my way back to Saskatoon now, the roads are okay mostly, but there are drifts that go right across. Especially near Chamberlain and just now past Davidson as you head north, you have to kind of drive on the shoulder and, uh, you know, greatly reduce your speed. But, uh... Oh, Carol, I think... <laughs> Yeah, the the call is, is in and out a bit just because of the of the fact that you are traveling. So that's really good to know what what it looks like near Chamberlain. And you know, I, I hope you stay safe, Carol. Be safe on the roads. And I, and I know uh, if you don't yeah. have to travel, hopefully people can stay home. But if they're like you, they're being safe. So thanks for calling, Carol. All right, take care. Okay, bye bye. You can call us too. The number is 1-800-716-2221. You can also email bluesky at cbc.ca. We have Ethan Williams with us, our CBC weather specialist. But we have another person on the line who I think had probably one of the most Saskatchewan weekends. She lives in Etonia but was at a curling bond spiel in Leader. And in between games, she was keeping herself updated on our biggest winter storm of the season. Jenny Hagan joins us right now. Hello, Jenny. Hi, guys. How are you today? Yeah, we're well. That does sound like the most Saskatchewan weekend ever, Jenny. Uh, it does. You know, weather and curling, I think it's something that Saskatchewan just loves regardless. So. Yeah. So was everybody talking about the storm? Was that the chatter at the Bond Spiel? There was a lot of chatter because right now in Saskatchewan, we're in the thick of uh, sports. You know, we're winding up hockey for the season and we're winding up basketball season. So there was a lot of people that were supposed to be on these roads um, on the weekend for games, and a lot of those were canceled, especially in this West Central area and uh, down to Saskatoon, which seemed to be some of the hardest hit areas. But you managed to make it to, to the curling event. How, how was uh, it traveling for you? Well, I got going uh, early before the storm set into western Saskatchewan here, and it didn't take long once that storm came in for roadways to start piling with snow and absolute zero visibility out there. So I know a lot of the hockey parents that had left from Leader uh, only made it 45 minutes before they had to turn around and stop, and they ended up having to stay in Kindersley until the storm passed. Yeah, a lot of folks had to stay in Kindersley, I, I understand, right? Yes, uh, all highways in that area ended up shut down. But I know us people that love weather were watching this system and models as it progressed. And I think we all just kind of went, oof, this one's going to be a good one. <laughs> uh, good old Saskatchewan blizzard that uh, we haven't had, the well, for me, for the luxury of having one of these this winter. Yeah, I hear you. So how how hard was the area hit? How would you describe what you saw? Um, it was zero visibility out there with that 70K uh, wind gusts up in the Kindersley area. And the snow is just piling into areas. You know, in and around the arena, the snow drifts are up past the roofs there. Oh, wow. And <laughs> there's like three feet of snow that's 
um, my whole backyard was level with at least three feet of snow. So it blew in hard and there was a lot of it. How did you manage, to, or have you dug out yet? How How is the shoveling um, been going? There's been lots of tractors in town on the go and snow blowers, so slowly getting dug out. There's single paths through the town now where at least it's, you know, small town Saskatchewan, but I guess we're doing one-way streets for a few days. <laughs> but you had, you had the right equipment. My uh, sole shovel here in Saskatoon would not have been enough to, to dig you out. I needed a tractor and I needed a snowblower. Luckily, one neighbor had the snowblower, but we need something to actually haul the snow out of the alley because there's nowhere to put it. Is that kind of the case where you are too? Yeah, you run out of places to put it. And then it's a question of you almost need a tractor to uh, start moving snow. And I think the last time we really seen that magnitude of snow in a winter would have been 2013, where you literally ran out of places to put snow. So Yeah, yeah. a couple of years ago in Saskatoon when we delayed the municipal election, that was the experience that came to mind for me when I snowshoed my way to the radio <laughs> studio at 5 in the morning. It was similar uh, to that experience. Uh, I think it was November of 2021, I think. Jenny, one last question for you, because you are a storm chaser, and I know that when you're doing it in the summertime, that's a unique experience. But the difference between watching a, a summer storm versus a winter one in many ways being in the in the middle of a winter storm feels more dangerous to me what's what's your sense of the difference um there is yeah a lot of potential risks in a winter snowstorm because one is due to visibility like winter summer storms you can usually see the storm you know where it is uh winter storms you're not seeing anything so while doing that it is uh, essentially, you're not moving at all. You're going there and you're parking and you're putting yourself in the middle of the elements, but you're parking in a safe zone where you know, you're not running the risk of being hit or anything like that. And it's always kind of my goal to be able to show people what it's like out there because what you're seeing in town isn't necessarily what the conditions are or down an hour from the road. So, you know, people get out on those highways and not realize what exactly they're getting themselves into. So... I put myself out there and uh, show people what's happening yeah. out there. Yeah, ideally to keep people safe. So, yes. Jenny, I appreciate you taking our phone call today. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. That is Jenny Hagen, who's a storm chaser, lives in Etonia, was traveling around a bit uh, in leader at a curling bond spiel. Lots of people were traveling to different sporting events, like Jenny said. So if you're listening and you'd like to share your storm story with us, we'd love to hear from you. 1-800-716-2221. You can also email us, bluesky at cbc.ca. I'm not the only one listening to these stories. We've got Ethan Williams, our CBC weather specialist. And then I think all the people stuck at home, probably with kids uh, eating lunch and wondering when they can get outside to play again because it is a snow day here in Saskatchewan. So give us a call, 1-800-716-2221 or email bluesky at cbc.ca. Yeah, stay home and give Ethan and I a call. I've got Ethan Williams, our CBC weather specialist, with us today for Blue Sky, sharing your storm stories. And Ethan, we've got a couple of callers on the line. So we should say hello to Rob in Saskatoon. Hi, Rob. Hi, Alicia. Yeah, we were up at uh, La Ronge for the weekend uh, with the uh, Saskalopit ski event. Nice. Lucky you. And, uh, yeah, well, I guess so. Uh, we did the camp overnight option, so it was, I think, minus 27 with a little bit of wind uh, for the winter camp out, which uh, we found pretty cold. Um, but we survived. We got back to, uh, to La Ronge, uh the second day. And uh, they had a bunch of fresh snow up there. So we left yesterday morning for Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the road was pretty good all the way to Prince Albert. And there we were advised that it's a whiteout between uh, Prince Albert and Saskatoon. And the hot highway hotline said travel not recommended. So we thought about getting a hotel in PA for the night. I thought, well, we'll try it. It's a divided highway. That, I think, takes a lot of the risk away. And we had no problem whatsoever. Uh, the road was clear enough. Uh, the visibility was good enough. We were able to drive the speed limit all the way from PA to Saskatoon. Huh. We got to our back alley, and it looked pretty uh, ominous. But our van 
pushed snow in front of it all the way down the alley to we to where we were crossed from our garage. Then we had to stop, and we had to shovel for probably more than an hour uh, while the van block, blocked the alley. But nobody was coming down the alley anyway. Mm-hmm. And we're now safely parked, and we got all our stuff from the loft uh, unpacked in the house. And we've been shoveling ever since. Yeah, you know, the, I think the real issue was getting in. Well, the, the travel was an issue, too. I'm glad you had a safe drive back from La Ronge down through PA and into Saskatoon. But then you got to the city, right? And it was like, wow, the city kind of shut down. Um, I think the cross-country ski lessons that were planned for Sunday afternoon in Saskatoon were canceled because of the snow. So you're That's lucky. We heard. Yeah, you got some skiing in, in right. La Ronge, and I'm glad you were safe uh, and made it, made it back home to Saskatoon. So, Rob. Well, th- hats mm. off to the, the, the plows and the, the crew, the snow removal crews in the city, because we were able to come straight over the freeway bridge and down Lorne, which was uh, plowed, and turned on to Taylor, which was also plowed. Uh, and we were good to the back alley. Um, These back alleys, I so, tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, they can be a bit of, and it still is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to throw in a little memory of being in grade one in a country school where the kids all walked to school. And we had a blizzard. The country roads were blocked solid. And I was walking to school and a neighbor came by with horses and a sleigh and a bale house, a little bale fort on the sleigh, and he was picking up kids and taking them to school. Love that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Rob, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Well, now we've got Jim on the line in Saskatoon, who also is looking to his past for a great story. Hi, Jim. Yeah, hi, Alicia. Yeah, mine does date me, but uh, in 19, December of 1955, my family and I were moving out of the city to a farm, which was three and a half miles out of the city, now in the middle of Briarwood. But it's the middle of, now middle of, like I said, Briarwood. But we were leaving at 6 o'clock on a Saturday night, the 5th of December. My family got separated. We were in two different cars, my dad and brother in one, my mother and sister and I in another. We got separated at Clarence Avenue and 8th Street. I have to remember that we realized that 8th Street at that time was just a, a, a two-way street. It wasn't divided. And we took from 6 o'clock until midnight to find one another, and my dad and neither my dad nor my mother went any further east than Preston Avenue nor any further west than Clarence Avenue. So it was about a, an eight block, and they realized later that they had driven past one another many a time. Oh, my gosh. not see the other car. When we got out the next day or the day after out to our out to our farm, we had 14-foot snowdrifts out there and uh, blowing in on the buildings. And I know that year and a few years later, there were farmers all over this part of the province that would tie ropes to their back door of their farmhouse out to their barn because there were guys that got lost just walking to the barn and froze to death. So they would yeah. have a rope so they could guide themselves. Yeah. So there's some bad, bad storms back then too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, Jim, thanks for calling. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. That's Jim joining us in Saskatoon, a quite story. I have Ethan Williams, our CBC weather specialist, with us. Ethan, when a, when a big storm like this hits, I, I do think it brings back memories of past storms. Are there mm-hmm. any that come to mind for you? Yeah, well, especially uh, uh, we heard a little bit earlier you were talking about the one uh, that postponed the municipal election in Saskatoon. Uh, that was kind of the last time that Saskatoon in particular saw a storm uh, of a, a similar magnitude to this one, 35, 40. Centimeters, uh, and and I think the one that I uh, do remember the the most was uh, was one. Of course, I'm in Regina, but the Saskatoon ones always seem to stand out to me because <laughs> there's some pretty remarkable things that happen when people get in these situations. And that the one that I remember the most would be a January of 2007, uh, the the uh, the Costco blizzard. Oh, yeah. I refer to that one mm-hmm. as. Uh, of course, I think uh, uh, my aunt was living up in Saskatoon at the time, and and I remember her her saying, you know, this is a, a pretty remarkable 
remarkable storm, not like any of the others. And that was when I heard, you know, it was so bad that people were sleeping on beds in Costco. And I couldn't believe it that, that uh, you know, people were, were really getting stranded like that. So I, that those are kind of two in particular that stand out to me. Yeah. And that is the reason why I didn't go to Costco on the weekend, yeah. because I don't want to <laughs> sleep at Costco. I mean, maybe I'm a bit too risk averse, but I stayed home all weekend and I was supposed to do some traveling on Friday and I could see what was coming. I thought, I don't, I don't want to be somewhere where I wasn't planning to be. So yeah. Costco is not a place where I want to spend the night, but I do recall the stories from 2007, just wild. Now, the other thing that tends to happen when we get so much snow like this, people do find a way to have some fun in it. I want to take you to my house for a second, Ethan. Take a listen. What do you guys think? Good. Let's see how deep is the snow. So deep. How deep is it, Zelda? Like 100 feet. 100 feet? I think it's more like 20 centimeters. No, 100. I think it's more like 8. <laughs> and I hear the shovel scraping the sidewalk. That's Dad doing all the work <laughs> while the rest of us just had some fun. I mean, I did help with shoveling for a while. He did the bulk of it, but my kids just had a ball. They were they were jumping from the steps into this huge pile of soft snow like it was a swimming pool yelling cannonball as they as they jumped from the steps into the snow. So they had some fun. Uh, and we got an email from Eliana who writes, my name is Eliana and I'm 10 years old from Saskatoon. Yesterday I played with my friend in the snow and the snow was almost as high as my waist. It was super fun. Today we managed to make a snow hill in our backyard, keeping us busy on our day home from school. I really like snow, but even my doll doesn't stay warm in this weather. I'm glad it stopped snowing. My Nana lives in Nova Scotia, and she just had a big snowstorm that kept her, kept her stuck at home for a week. That's from Eliana. You know, I was thinking about that big storm in Nova Scotia, and that was my point of comparison. You know, I was like, oh, we can still open our doors. You know, it's only up to my knees. It's not up to my my chin. Uh, right, Ethan? We tend to compare the storms that have hit the country, don't yeah. we? Yeah, it's true. You know, there, there are, we often think we have it the worst here in the prairies, and you know, maybe we do. I think we like to keep that, uh, the, you know, the uh, the champions of winter weather here, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, there are some incredible, incredibly powerful storms uh, that can hit, uh, especially the coasts and especially the east coast when they get, uh, you know, that really wet snow, heavy snow, and it starts building up. Uh, it, it can really wreak havoc in that part of the country. Yeah, you're not moving for several days, no. just like Eliana's Nana there, staying home for a whole week. Mm-hmm. We we are loving hearing your storm stories. 1-800-716-2221 is the number to call. It could be a storm story, a neighbor helping a neighbor, or perhaps you just want to update us on how much snow you got in your part of the province and what the roads and highways are like. So you can call us or you can email blueskyandblue.com at cbc.ca. I'm Leisha Gravinsky. You are listening to us on CBC Radio 1. And our guest today is Ethan Williams, our CBC weather specialist, the perfect guest for a storm show. Now, Ethan, we have another caller on the line. This time it's Dwayne in Carrot River. Hi, Dwayne. Yes, I grew up on a farm just south of Regina, 10 miles. And in the mid-50s, we had just a terrible, terrible winter. In those days... You had a main power pole in your yard, and then the line ran to the house and ran to the barn. And my father had to go out with two-by-fours, 10, 12 feet long, and push the power line up in the air so my brother and I couldn't touch the line. So that's how high it was. (laughs) (laughs) The 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 snow was about 13 feet deep. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. And how would you manage this weekend? What was it like in Carrot River? I'm right this right at right now I'm at Greenwater Provincial Park and we got about four inches. We didn't get the terrible storm, but the trees are just full of spruce trees are just full of snow. It's like a Christmas card. Ah, it must look beautiful. Dwayne, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Enjoy your show. Bye. Thank you. That is Dwayne and Carrot River. You can call us too, 1-800-716-2221. You can also email us, bluesky at cbc.ca. We got an email from Fran who writes, 
Remember the healthcare workers who are putting in long hours because relief staff just can't make it into work. I remember the long hours in 2007. Again, that's that snowstorm we were talking about, Ethan. Working short-staffed and finally making it home 36 hours later to three hours of shoveling. Wow, that's a story, friend. Yeah. yeah. And those are the folks that we should be thinking about. You know, on Saskatoon Morning today, Ethan, as I was listening, uh, the city spokesperson who deals with emergency preparedness, Pamela golden McLeod, was saying how members of Saskatoon Fire and the police service made sure that, that staff who work at the warm-up shelter here in Saskatoon, at one of them, uh, that anybody with a 4x4 vehicle was out and getting other staff members so they could get to work to ensure that the warm-up shelter was able to stay open because, of Mm -hmm. course, when we have weather like this, the most vulnerable really, really need a place to go. And I was thinking about that on the weekend. You know, I was cozy in my house, but there are those who who definitely need additional support. So it was nice to hear how Saskatoon Fire and police helped make that happen. And those are the kind of stories that we're hoping to hear today, right? Neighbours helping neighbours. I'll tell you another story, Ethan. Because we have uh, babies on either side of our uh, our house, neighbors who just had a baby, and, and then the other side, their baby, I think, is probably just over a year now. But, uh, you know, really feeling like it was important to check in on them, and we made sure that their, their sidewalks were shoveled because you don't want to be heading out with a baby. But then a neighbor from two blocks over walked over with her shovel over her shoulder and I was standing on my step saying hello to some folks and then she walks by and she's like I was just making sure that the people with the baby had a clear sidewalk Mm -hmm. so we were all looking out for one another in in my neighborhood so call us with those kinds of stories too 1-800-716-2221 or email bluesky at cbc.ca you must love those kinds of stories, Ethan, right? Because when you're talking about the weather, you're always giving us the news we need to know to stay safe. But it is the community stories that probably stand out. Yeah, it's so true. And it's amazing how, uh, well, like you just mentioned there, you know, people who have never met each other before are uh, just come together in a, in a time of, of crisis and in a time of need like this. And, and that is the thing, you know, so often you're, when you're doing the weather, you, you're kind of focusing so much on the data and, and on what's going on and giving people the information uh, that they need to know, but I, I think people also appreciate, you know, hearing about the the stories from people and that sense of community that that kind of brings it all together. And and uh, and and like we're hearing today from people, uh, the very interesting stories uh, that they can remember all these years later. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, was it uh, Jim we were hearing from uh, who remembers the exact date of the storm <laughs> in 1955? You know, uh, remarkable that you know these these uh, events are so big in our lives that we can remember it down to the exact day. Yeah, I love that. We've got a couple more callers on the line who have stories just like that. So let's say hello to Ralph and Cabri. Hi, Ralph. Oh, hi, Lisa. Yeah, good program. Uh, just a, a story about my, my late dad always told this story when he was courting my uh, later to become mother. Uh, he rode horses to, to court and to court her and uh, had to ride about 15, 20 miles to her town but anyways he left later than he should have from her place and of course the storm came up and he said he couldn't see in front of the horse's head he was riding his good horse saddle horse but uh he kept trying to turn the horse to what he thought was the road home and the horse refused and refused and refused so finally he just dropped the reins and pulled his hat down low and kept on going and he said after a while, he woke up, the horse stopped, and he thought, why is he stopping? And here he was, right in front of the barn. Wow. So That's quite the story. So quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. The horses, <laughs> animals know how to get home. They yeah. sure do. All right, anyways, thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks for calling. But, yep. Yeah, now, bye-bye. Bye. Now we have Joe on the line in Saskatoon. Hi, Joe. Hello, hello. Yeah, I um, made some notes some years ago, and I called them up again on my computer and uh, there's one note that says here the Saskatchewan blizzard of 1945 was the worst recorded in Canadian history and uh, <clears throat> yeah what, what to s- say that again what year oh, was that oh, oh okay 1945 1945 yeah. okay can, uh, I, I was three years old then uh, I don't remember the storm itself but I can remember and there are pictures of the uh, farmyard with the uh, 
snow very high in the trees. But then there was another one that I do remember. I think it was 1954 or 55, December the 12th. And uh, it was a beautiful morning. And uh, so the cattle were let out, and they wouldn't put, go back in, into the barn because it was so nice. And um, anyway, we went to school, and then the storm came up, and uh, we weren't able to get home for, for three days, a little country school. Luckily, there were um, neighbors very close, so we spent a few days with, with them. Quite Great adventures in, in our youth. Yeah, no kidding. And amazing how those stories, you know, you, you were too young to really be part of it, but yet here you are telling us all about it. I love that. It's like 2007. I wasn't living in Saskatoon, but I, f- I feel like I was there because of the number of times I've heard the story. So, Joe, thanks for calling. You're welcome. That's Joe in Saskatoon. You know, talking about being in a rural area, I do want to share just quickly that I, we noticed on Twitter that Mitch Stewart was talking about how it's calving season. And on his Twitter, you would not believe how deep the snow is as they're trying to get to uh, to take care of these, these calves. Uh, and perhaps you're listening and that's your experience. It's a busy time of year. And if a storm like that hits, it, life does not stop. Work does not stop on the farm. So give us a call. 1-800-716-2221. You can also email bluesky at cbc.ca. I want to go now to North Battleford. Randy Patrick is the city manager there. Hello to you, Randy. Hello. So North Battleford got quite a bit of snow, didn't it? Yes, we had, uh, we're not sure the exact amount. We know we had over 20 centimeters and lots of blowing. Yeah. Ethan, do you know what the totals were for North Battleford? I think there were a couple estimates uh, that came in over volunteer reports that said it was uh, kind of in that same range, maybe as much as just over 30 centimeters there. Ooh, wow. Okay. So, Randy, what does that look like uh, when, you look, when you look out your window? What do you see? Uh, I've got some drifts in my driveway that are approaching four feet, <laughs> uh, but there, there's a lot of snow. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, well, it's one thing to ha- for you to have to deal with your driveway, but you're you're trying to deal with the entire community of North Battleford. So, what yeah. what did that snow mean for the city? Well, we were shut down pretty much yesterday uh, as we started cleaning roads. Uh, but we're actually reopening today. Our rec centres are, are opened up again. Um, we do still have some service issues. We have people who can't make it into work. They're, they're not able to get out of the, out of the uh, roads. The main roads are pretty much done, but the uh, other, you know, the roads where people live on tend to be a little later in the process. So they're still, we're still having problems getting some staff in. So we're still having some issues around being fully open in our facilities, doing everything we would normally do. Mm-hmm. So did you, and did, did schools have to shut down in North Battleford or did kids make it out the door today? The schools were closed here, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's uh, Saskatchewan and it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like I said earlier, it does feel rare that we shut down in this way. I think that's why it's so significant, and why we're doing a show today with storm about your storm stories. Because yep. uh, I mean, sure, all of us seem to have a story, but at the same time, we kind of pride ourselves in being being able to continue on in the winter in Saskatchewan. The big difference here was the wind that came with the snow. It uh, it definitely filled up uh, every little place where you could possibly have snow and uh, made roads very much hard, very very difficult to get through, uh, especially in the residential areas here. So how 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 will North Battleford uh, deal with this in the days to come? You know, my point of comparison. I'm in the city of Saskatoon, and I think we're all asking. You know, will the city make it to some of those side streets? Uh, it is the first week in March. We we hope spring is right around the corner. How will North Battleford approach some of those side streets? Well, we uh, have a schedule here. What we do is actually a little bit different. We close down. Um, streets on certain days uh, and we actually go out on those days and they're just closed down all the time on like if it's a Thursday that's the day your street will get done we might we're trying to see if there's anything we can do to speed it up a little bit Uh, but we should have a large part of the city done towards the end of this week and uh, the main roads are pretty much in pretty good shape right now Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to do it a little quicker than normal because this is impacting residents a little more than Mm -hmm. our most most of our average snows Mm -hmm. do you have any stories of neighbors helping neighbors any examples that you can share of you people know, coming I just, together I, I, I saw that this morning with uh, trucks stuck and cars stuck and people pushing and you know i think it's just the the, the normal stuff for you know uh, saskatchewan cities and particularly north battleford people help 
Yeah. What what is the the benefit of all of this snow at this point? You are you've got Table Mountain in your backyard, and I think that's on the minds of a lot of people. Of how, this could mean an extended snow season, an extended it, ski it, it season. Could, we, we got some warming coming. Uh. That could help. <laughs> <laughs> but are people love, talking about the benefits? Are people talking about the benefits of all this snow? Mainly around uh, the farms. We had uh, very little snow up till a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we've made up for it very yeah. quickly. Yeah. And you know, this I think our third snowstorm in a couple of weeks. And uh, so, you know, getting getting some moisture in those fields is important. It's important to our economy, and it's uh, something that uh, we we're starting to get a little worried about in January. Yeah, that's a question I'm going to put to to Ethan because, of course, we've had plenty of conversations about the uh, potential drought and just the worries over that. So, Randy, I think thank you for joining us today and giving us an update on North Battleford. I appreciate this. I really appreciate having the conversation with you. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. That is Randy Patrick, the city manager for North Battleford. We do have the CBC's Ethan Williams with us. He's our weather specialist. Ethan, that is the big question. You know, stories we were doing in December where we, I think I felt quite panicked by the fact that we didn't have any snow. Now we've got this big dump. Does that make up for the shortfall that we saw earlier in the season? Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to tell because, you know, I think uh, you're going to hear anyone, everyone say any snow is good snow. Uh, but, you know, we, the past few months in particular have just been really dry. And of course, we've we've had this dry pattern. Really, you know, you look back the last couple of years here, and and a lot of areas of the province, especially around uh, the the Battlefords, there, uh, they just haven't gotten the moisture that they they really need. I think what's really going to be important is uh, when we get into spring here, and we need those uh, those uh, uh, as everyone says, the timely rains uh, that are really going to help, and a, a shortening of those really dry, hot periods that we saw in the spring last year are going to be beneficial. I think it's this is definitely a, a welcome sight for sure. The the difference with that with this type of snow is that we've seen it, uh, you know, fall under much uh, colder conditions. So the snow that we had from this system was pretty dry. Uh, it was it was fairly light. It's you know quite wispy. It blows around uh, quite easily. Uh, you know, compared to uh, snow that we've seen earlier in the winter, which is a little bit more thick, a little bit more wet. And uh, what happens is if you uh, melt down the type of snow that we got from this particular system because it's dry, it really doesn't equal a whole lot of, of water when you when you melt it down. So, uh, you know, the type of snow that we get is is important in these systems sometimes. And some of that uh, wetter snow may come a little bit later uh, as we get in towards spring here. Uh, but interestingly enough, Leisha, um, Philip Harder, who is a hydrologist, uh, was answering this question uh, on X, uh, formerly Twitter, uh, this morning. And he estimates, you know, if you take around 30 centimeters of snow uh, in his area, he's, he's near Saskatoon, it melts down to about about 45 millimeters, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, pretty significant. So, uh, you know, especially in areas that had some rain maybe a little bit earlier uh, this winter and now are kind of getting that uh, free, uh, freezing and, and uh, melting going on, uh, it definitely could be a little bit of a, 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 an aid to them as we get toward the spring. Let's hope so. But I learned something new today, Ethan. I, I'm very familiar with the concept of a dry cold, but had not really put into conversation the concept of dry snow. Yeah. So learned something new, and it makes sense. I, I know exactly what you're talking about, because the way we were playing in it yesterday, it was light, it was fluffy, not dense and super wet. So very interesting, Ethan. Yeah. We have one more caller on the line that will qu- quickly quickly squeeze in here, Sandra in Carrot River. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Lisa. Glad to, glad to be able to talk to you today. I want to share a story about uh, the big storm in 2007, mm-hmm. a bus story. I was going to Saskatoon for a, a cancer appointment. Uh, we, we ran into this blizzard and the big bus. We went sideways on the highway. We had to overnight in Waka. Oh, gosh. Yes. Terrifying. So it was. There was maybe, you know, I don't know, 10 people on the, the bus, but they were able to put us up in motels, and FCC paid for us and and the meal and whatever, yeah. not a pizza. But, yes, a grader had to come and we, we went sideways in the middle of the road, so a grader had to come and pull us out. It was quite terrifying. No kidding. And well, you know, 
the road, the highway around Walker, there's, there's three steep embankments around there. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it was scary. Yeah. Got a scary. bus, you know, a heavy bus. Oh, gosh. You know, like, yes. Yeah. Scary indeed, and 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 now all these years later, it's it's something you can share, and it, it's something that uh, unites us, you know, in this kind of strange way, right? I appreciate you calling today, exactly. Sandra. Have a really good oh, afternoon, and stay safe today. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. That is Sandra joining us uh, in Carrot River. We've been uh, speaking with Ethan Williams, our CBC weather specialist. Ethan, I'd like to thank you for spending the noon hour with us. A lot of folks at home enjoying this snow day. So you were a lovely companion to have with us today, oh, Ethan. So thank you. My pleasure. It's it's my obviously my favorite thing to talk about. So I'm glad to be here. <laughs> love it. Love it. Ethan, thank you. You're welcome. Stay safe today. You as well.